Hi guys, it's Andy, the Expedition Hiker, and today I want to talk about poles, in particular trekking poles. So, who needs them, when do we need them, and how do we use them? So it's over to you, Outdoor Andy. I want to talk about trekking poles, these delightful things here. Trekking poles, walking poles, whatever you want to call them. They are a useful asset for when hill walking, long distance walking, any type of walking. Okay, now you can you can have them in pairs or you can have them as a single. Generally, I go with a single. Now, reasons why I need it, there's a lot of benefits to them. The whole point is that it's to help you have a, an easier journey while walking. But you also have other benefits too. It improves your pace, your stability, your balance. And actually, if you've got any aching joints or anything else, especially as you're getting older, then a walking stick will help you uh, to get up those hills a little bit easier and down them as well. And also it's got a purpose as well. If you're walking along, you come to some wet, boggy land, then you can prod in before you put your foot in. You also, I've had it in the past, brown snakes. I've had a couple of brown snakes on the trail. Just push them away with my pole. You don't have to hit them or anything else. Just easily push them away. Again, going through brambles and long overgrown grass and everything else, nettles. You can push them away to make your route easier. So there's plenty of things you can use a trekking pole for. Now there is another one, you can use it for a first aid aid. So you could use it for um, making a splint. So you, you can make it shorter, put it up against your leg and tie around there to make a splint. Again, also a broken arm. You mobilize your arm, so you have the pole shorter. Now it can be built in different ways depending on how your arm injury is, but it can actually make a support across the back actually keeping your arm in the same place if you tie it around with a couple of bandages there and then a sling will hold it all in place now just have to watch this point it doesn't stick in your face but then you could actually do it that way instead okay so what i said earlier about the balance and everything else so when you obviously with one pole three legs is better than two so you've got your two legs you've got your walking pole if you go for two walking poles then you've got four points of contact on the ground which is obviously going to be better for when you're walking up hills or down hills okay you also you can use them on the flat now you, you see all the light nordic walkers they're doing a, a quite a bit of pace using the poles and the thing is is that that means that you're not just using your lower body as a workout while you're walking up the hills you're actually using your upper body as when you're using the poles like that so what size do you set the pole at well actually on the most poles they do have measurements on them this one is a 135 length pole now there's some of them do come to 125 i think there is a 155 one so you can measure up to 135 i generally keep mine at 130 and then the bottom part is there are markings on it as well but generally the markings do wear out occasionally so what i've done is i've just got a sharpie pen and marked it circle around and I know exactly where my preferred point is. So I don't have to keep measuring it, trying to get it right each time. So I want my pole to be 90 degrees. Okay, it's like the arms on the ground here, but this angle here needs to be 90 degrees. Now, even if you're walking uphill or downhill, keep it at 90 degrees. Because if you're walking uphill, it's a bit higher and it pushes you up through the step. If it's downhill, then obviously, if you put your hand on the top of the pole then you know, that gives you that push through as you're walking it makes your steps a lot easier less weight on the legs less weight on the knees your back your spine and even your neck okay especially if you're carrying a pack like this i've got a lot of weight on my back at the moment it reduces that weight even if you've got a day pack and you've got your lunch and waterproofs and everything else whatever you've got carrying with you it makes it easier if you've got walking poles with you because you're reducing the amount of pressure you're putting on your body and 
put it through the pole. So as I walk, when I bring that pole forward, I want to bring my right foot forward. Pole in my left hand, foot forward on my right. And then you bring your foot forward, and then I've got a slight bad left knee. So that's why I use one pole, because when I do it this, I use the pole to push through, reducing the weight that's on my knee when I impact onto the ground. Now, if you've got two poles, then obviously you do it left, right, left, right. So if I bring my left foot forward and my left pole forward, then it's not really, I'm still having to push through my leg and not push through the pole, okay? So I'm reducing the amount. So what I want to do is opposite pole to opposite foot, okay? So bring it through. Now, when you're walking uphill, what you want to do really is tilt the pole so your arm is further out and the pole is pointing in so close to your body so when you come forward it pushes you forward okay the pole will push you forward if you've got it that way and it's too far out then all you're doing is pushing on the pole and still you'll feel it in your thighs that way so if you push it that way you're pushing yourself forward okay so and if you use two poles, it's exactly the same. You're pushing yourself forward. Don't let the pole go away from you. You want to keep it quite close to the body. So you, when you've got your pole in front, where my foot is, I've got about eight to 10 inches a gap between the two. Don't want to bring it out. There's a couple of things. Obviously, footpaths are marked out for a particular reason. They're a way for you to get off a place. They're also there for to protect the actual landscape so reduce the amount of erosion uh, impact so if you keep your pole within the trail and track then obviously it's not causing any disturbance to the actual rest of the landscape but if you're sticking your pole further outwards then you are uh, attacking the landscape so to speak and actually your the whole the point of your pole will push into the ground especially when you're in a peak district with peat so you press that into there you create a little hole and that water drains into that hole and that actually can over years can produce a little bit of a floodplain in that area because water will collect to that spot more rain will come in open up to be a big puddle and that make a wet spot of the peat okay now that can, doesn't mean just about the peat district every other place as well sandy other gravelly type terrain so so you want to keep the pole quite close to you because the other thing is, is if it's too far out then it's not actually doing much to you there and actually start to get a strain on your bicep and your tricep and across the back of your forearm as well so keep it in quite close so as i so i bring my right foot forward left pole forward i turn the pole so it's pushing so the pole is away from me and i push through the step okay so that's what i'm aiming to do so i'm going downhill what I'm going to do is I want to keep the pole more straight to slightly tilted outwards. I put my hand on the top of the pole and I push myself through it that way. So I push myself through it that way and actually then I can, I've can i got more balance, more stability and I'm actually feeling my way down before I actually put my thing. So I'm actually getting my good foot in as well. Okay, so that's the principles of poles. So back to the, the studio where I'll tell you more. The poles can be made from a variety of different materials, which include steel, aluminium and carbon fibre. Some are foldable, some poles are a fixed length and other poles are adjustable. So the anatomy of a trekking pole. At the top we have the crown, that's usually a plastic piece at the top. Then we have the grip. There's a variety of materials you can use as grips, which include rubber, EVA foam, cork, and plastic. Cork reduce your chance of sweating. Cork is not very good in winter conditions. Uh, rubber and plastic are better for winter conditions, especially if you're wearing gloves. Personally, I prefer the EVA foam because that can be used in multiple conditions. Some trekking poles have anti-shock built into them. Then moving down, some poles have a secondary grip, like these ones, an EVA grip. Then we've got our wrist strap. The main part of the trekking pole is the shaft. It has the upper section, the mid section, and the lower section. And each of the sections are locked by adjusting a mechanism. And there's two types. So I've got a twist and lock, 
or there's the clamp type. Onto the lower part of the pole, we have the metal tip, which is generally made of hardened metal or carbine. Now, if you were walking on a rocky area or tarmac roads, then it's best to put a rubber tip cover. So slightly further up than the metal tip, we have where we connect the accessory threads. So these are called baskets. So the different type of baskets, usually we have the circular, small, round rubber ones. They're usually for mud or sandy or wet conditions. And then we have the larger ones that we have holes in them and do look like a snowflake because they are snow baskets. So that's the main part of the trekking pole. Hopefully the information that I talked about outside will give you an, a better idea of how to use poles and who they're for. Now, trekking poles can be used for anybody. There is a bit of a myth that everybody thinks it's elderly people or those with an injury. It's more about preventing injury rather than actually having the injury in the first place. So if you start at a younger age and you start using trekking poles, then there'll be benefits for you in the future, meaning you'll be able to walk longer and further into your life. So there's less impact on your knees, your feet, your legs, along your spine, on your back, and even in your neck and shoulders, if you use trekking poles correctly. And as I mentioned, you can go longer and further. Your balance will be stronger, your endurance will be better as well. By using two trekking poles, you can increase the pace of your walking with less fatigue at the end of the day. You've been using the trekking poles to ease the weight off your body. So hopefully with all that information and you haven't got a set of trekking poles, you may consider to get some. Now next week I'm actually going to talk about some particular types of trekking pole, what I would recommend as a good trekking pole. So with that hopefully you've got something from this video. It's not just about elderly people and the injured, it is about everybody using trekking poles because as I said it will increase your balance your stability, your pace. There are lots of benefits to using trekking poles, as well as popping up your tent. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have, please click the like and please subscribe. And if you like, add a comment. So until next time, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye hikers.